So welcome. Tonight for Yin, our class is called Compassion and Ease. And to get into those spaces energetically of compassion, we tend to use some stronger shapes. So we're going to ease ourselves into these stronger yin forms and use breath to use all the supports that we have at our resource to be able to structure ourselves so we can get into those uncomfortable places in a comfortable way and then use our awareness to sink down with breath and relax into those and experience what comes up for us and then we flip over towards the end of practice more into those spaces of ease a little bit of choose your own adventure so you can decide in your practice where you want to be energetically how strong the sensation is that you want to feel as we start to wind down but we're going to start in a wide child's pose so you can come in supported or unsupported we're going to bring big toes to touch and you can bring your knees as wide as your ribs just enough space to accommodate your upper body or you can take them much, much wider. So you feel this more through the inner line of the thigh and through the outside and into the glute muscle. And as you come down, you could bring a bolster in front of you. You could bring it in front across the space, a space for the arms to rest. You can shift and move in, bring your hips closer to the heels, feel yourself shift back a little deeper into the inner line of the legs. And as you let your body sink down either to the floor or to a support, take a sigh, decide if you want your arms to be forward, maybe alongside or even bend the elbows and create a support for the forehead or the chin once you find your way in here you're ready take a slow deep breath in a big heavy sigh start to surrender into this space And then start that journey from the fingers all the way through the body. What can you make softer?
Let's take one more slow, deep breath right here. And if your arms are anywhere other than forward, bring them there. We're gonna turn this into tadpole. So we're going to lift the heart just a little bit and leave the legs where they are and walk to one side. It doesn't matter which one, we're gonna do both. Just leaving the hips grounded, the knees grounded, so you're opening up through the side body. So take this as shallow or as deep into a side bend as feels good. You might take it really slow. And then when you found that space that you think you can settle into, take a sigh, let the shoulders get heavy to the floor. You'll feel that gentle twist through the upper body. It's gonna reach into the sideline from the hip, through the ribs, the arm, right down to the fingers. And then just melt back in. You start to feel some discomfort rise to the sideline. See if you can relax a little bit more, maybe sigh back in. You just take three more breaths here. Very slowly, we're gonna lift the heart just a little bit again. Take your time as you walk all the way to the other side. Start to settle back into this side bend. Feeling this reach from the ribs all the way through the upper torso. Very aware of any of the spaces that you are starting to bring tension back in. Let the awareness wander, soften everything back out.
We're going to take three more breaths here. Taking your time, start to lift the heart just enough that you can walk yourself back to center. We're gonna to shift towards hands and knees and take our rebound here. It's a strong space for rebound. Just let the weight rest into the hands with the head and neck dangle. Breathe through any strong sensations that are coming through. And let's just take a few cat and cow here. Help move anything that's lingering. Drop the core when you breathe in. Really slowly round the spine, the head, the neck as you breathe out. We're gonna to move towards gecko, or also known as lizard pose. So coming so that we can step forward into a low lunge, you might bring with you a support. We're gonna bring the right leg forward first. So on hands and knees, step to the outside of the hands. We start to let the hips sink forward. You have so many options here to build this up. You can have blocks under the hands. You could have blocks under the forearms as we start to get closer to the floor. You could build up a bolster on top of your blocks. If that's a space, it's a little bit gentler for the arms. You can let the front knee start to spill out or keep it drawing in towards the ribs. If you want more here, you can tuck the back toe under and draw the leg back. That gets really strong very quickly, mindful of the space. So this is a variation of dragon. If this is too strong in your practice today for any reason, come all the way down in your belly and draw that right knee out to the side in baby gecko. It isn't so much into the hip then as it is a little bit into the groin. But wherever you choose, take that big sigh and start to settle in. This shape asks a lot of your mind. So 
Start to let yourself relax and see if you can release muscles. Keep the shoulders soft and away from the ears. And if emotions rise or you feel any triggers, any reactive emotions, just come back with the mind to the breath. Soften back in. We're going to stay here for eight more rounds of breath. But remember, you have permission in your practice, in your own practice, to shift out, to change your shape, to release whenever it feels like it's time. Two more breaths. Don't rush them. Let them be full and ease filled. And if you're in this upright version of Gecko, very, very slowly press the floor away. We're gonna step that front foot back. We're gonna come all the way down onto our stomach to take our rebound there. Mindful of big sensations and large energy release. Remembering that in yin, this is the practice. Spaces in between where we can feel and observe. Feel the ease come through, the energy shift. These are the spaces that we find compassion for ourselves.
One more breath. Maybe move the toes and the ankles, bend at the knees. We're gonna come towards Sphinx pose. So bringing elbows underneath the shoulders. You can bring it palms down. You can even interlace the fingers. Gentle back bend. We're gonna draw the heart forward, shoulders away from the ears. With a sigh, start to settle in. So try and keep the heart lifted. The head and neck might dangle. You might feel the shoulders move forward just a touch. If this feels too strong, the elbows could move towards the top of the mat instead of out. Move them forward to reduce the height, the depth of your back bend. You could support yourself with bolsters or blankets beneath the ribs. But once you've found that space, that sigh is your tool to settle in. Soften the face, feel the release melt all the way down the spine. Unravel the tension around the sit bones. Relax the legs. We have about one more minute here and you can stay right in Sphinx pose. You could release and come down to your rebound or you can lift up into seal if a little more of a back bend would feel good. Turning the hands towards the outer edges of your mat and press into the hands. This is a really strong back bend mindful as you choose this to lift the heart and if you come to this space take that sigh and soften relax the upper body let the ribs move forward relax the muscles to the sit bones as the hips get heavy
Come back to the breath. Breathing well into the heart space. Take three more here, wherever here might be for you. And when you're ready, start to ease the elbows back down to the mat if you were in seal. And then we're all going to take the elbows out to the sides and make a pillow for the chin or the forehead. You could also take one cheek to the mat, whatever feels right for you. And just feel here. Three more really deep inhales. Send it right into the space of the low back and sink down when the breath releases. And then we can invite that movement back in. You can move ankles, wrists. You could bend at the knees and windshield wiper. We're gonna press back to hands and knees. So bringing the hands under the shoulders, take your time as you move back towards table. We're gonna come into our gecko variation on the other side. So this time we step the left foot to the outside of the hands, unless we're taking baby gecko and then we come back down and the left knee comes up to the outside. Take your time here to build up your supports, whatever you choose them to be. Could be none, could be blocks, could be blocks and a bolster, whatever feels right. You could stay up on your hands or start to move down towards forearms. Taking your time, using your breath to help you make your way there. The knee might start to spill out to the side a little. You could draw the back leg just a little further back if you want more sensation. When you've found your shape, the big sigh, let go of all the tension that you can, soften the face and settle into comfortable discomfort. Come to breath.
We're going to spend three more breaths here. Try and not rush them. Just savor the space. And then very slowly, if you're in the upright version of Gecko, take your time to press the floor away. Move back so that you can step the front foot back to knees. Find a space for your rebound, something that feels good for you. So maybe it's on your stomach. Maybe it's on your back. Maybe you're sitting in Seiza. Just find your way to whatever shape that might be. Take a sigh as you arrive there and really feel into everything that's shifting, everything that's moving. We're gonna spend a few more breaths here. Sometimes the longer you stay in your rebound, the more you feel, the deeper it goes. One more breath in this vibration right here. We're gonna to start to slowly make our way towards a supported fish pose. So if you're on your stomach, you might shift away from the floor and move through a little cat and cow or some movement before you find your way there. If you're on your back, you could bring knees to chest, rock and roll, shift around, whatever you feel like you need. 
on your way to this next shape. And I'm gonna offer you the option to take this supported fish with blocks or a bolster. The block version can be a little bit stronger, brings on a different sensation. The bolster would come behind you. You could support it up with blocks if you like to build something a little more restorative. The block version, try and keep it fairly low. You can turn both your blocks so they go across the width of your mat. Or you can have the one that's coming behind your shoulders running the length of your spine and the second behind your head. It's really a personal choice. We're gonna spend some time here. Gentle back bend, opening the arms out into a T or a space that feels good to allow you to open the heart and chest. Your legs could be long. They could be in constructed resting with the knees bent and the feet on the mat, or they could spill out into butterfly. You found your space, take your sigh, get heavy to the floor, let it rise up to cradle you here.
starting to breathe fully into the heart space. Taking one more deepest breath here. And bringing movement through the fingers first. Maybe rolling out the wrists. If your legs are in butterfly, you can bring the feet to the floor and close the knees. We're going to roll to one side to come off a bolster or let the hands help tuck the chin first if you're coming off blocks and just coming down on your side. We're gonna make our way to our back. Let the feet find the floor so we can align our spine. So we have a little bit of choose your own adventure here. Depending on how you're feeling in your body and just take these few breaths here to check in. We can move through crescent moon, one side to the other or take a strong twist, something like a cat's tail. I'm gonna guide you in and through both. You can choose what's gonna feel best for your body. They're both big energy shapes. Crescent moon might be a little more accessible depending on how you're feeling right now. If you're coming into the crescent moon, let your body be long like in Shavasana, we reach the hands up overhead you're going to ground down through the sacrum and let the upper body first reach towards the upper left and then the lower body reach towards the lower left. And you have that chance to explore through crossing and uncrossing ankles, taking wrists or elbows. You want to open up the whole right side of your body. If you want to move into something like cat's tail, we're going to press into the feet. Shift the hips strongly to the right. Come onto the side so our knees tuck together in the beginning of a twist. And then that bottom leg moves back. The top knee comes forward. So you're right on your side. Your right hand's going to reach for that bottom foot. And open yourself back into a bit of a twist. You can explore this. You have lots of space for movement. The top knee can move higher towards the heart or farther away. The bottom leg can shift further back so the shoulders can make their way to the floor. Whatever version of a shape you're in here, take a big sigh. And then start to settle in. Always the opportunity for micro movements, drawing shoulders out from under the body, adjusting so that you feel the exact right amount of sensation.
Slowly starting to deepen the breath. Just notice the shift in the body and the energy as the breath changes. Be mindful and easy as you start to release where you are. If you're in cat's tail, trying not to let that leg snap when you release it. Starting to bring yourself back to center. If you're in crescent moon, let the arms come down for a moment as you come to the center line. Just a couple of moments here. And then when you're ready, moving into the other side. So crescent moon, the sacrum stays grounded, the arms overhead, first reaching to the upper right corner and then the legs to the lower right corner. Cat's tail, we shift the hips to the left, come onto the side, let that top leg fall forward and the back leg move back. Reach for the bottom foot, start to shift and move, not ever having to come into a deep version of this twist, just letting yourself open up. You want to feel through the sideline, wherever you are. Take that big, heavy sigh and surrender in.
starting to reconnect with breath. One last full inhale, sending it into your sideline. And surrender heavy on the exhale. Slowly, carefully unwinding wherever you are, coming back to that center line. Just taking a breath here. I'm moving really slow, trying not to shake up your energy. If you needed socks or sweaters, maybe a blanket, as you start to shift into your Shavasana. Make your way there. You might support under the knees with a bolster. You could come to your side. You could come to pentacle pose and take up lots of space. And as you start to arrive, let the eyes close down. Feel the floor reach up to support you. Take one very intentional breath coming in through the nose. Let it drop right down to the belly. So the belly rises, the ribs open and the heart lifts. Pause here. Just notice. When you're ready, big heavy sigh to surrender.
And we'll start to slowly deepen the breath. And bring in movement through the fingers and the toes. Roll the wrists, the ankles. Let the head drop from side to side. And let's reach the arms overhead. Bring the legs together, slowly lengthen the whole body, big deep breath in. And a heavy sigh, let it go. Maybe bring the knees to chest. Give yourself a squeeze, a rock from side to side. And you could pause on your side few moments to let the energy settle and then start to make your way up towards seated taking your time absolutely no rush when you do arrive you might sit up on a block or your bolster, or just come to something that's truly comfortable in your body. Let your eyes close back down. Take an opportunity to check in. It's a big energy practice. Not only physically shifting a lot of prana, opening big spaces, but energetically, maybe even emotionally, a big practice. So just sit for a moment with what is here for you. Let it be perfect exactly as it is. And then we'll bring hands up towards heart. Just take a moment to honor your practice. Gratitude for making this time for yourself. It's always you have my gratitude for joining me, allowing me to guide you. Keep taking good care. I'll see you soon.